the minimum number of cars in transport cabinet protocols by uh, Julia Kessner, Alexander Koch, Stefan Wazen, Daki Miyahara, Yuji Hayashi, Takaki Miyuki, and Hideaki Shon. Alexander and Daki will give a presentation. Thank you. Uh, this is Daiki and I'm Alex, and we talk about uh, card-based crypto protocols and lower bonds for them. So uh, this is joint work with Yuri Kastner, Stefan Walzer, Yuichi Hayashi, Mitsu Takaki Mizuki, and Hideaki Son. So um, let's first uh, put, put us into a scenario where we, um, uh, like, which we may arise, which may arise in real life. So uh, let's assume you want to do like a movie evening, and uh, you would like to watch uh, some movie X, but that would be actually very embarrassing, except if my flat lay, mate likes X also. <laughs> so maybe you have experienced this situation. And yeah, so the most natural thing to do would be, of course, uh, running cryptographic protocols for this. We have private set intersection, everything is already there. So we can like write a short smart app for, for our smartphone and Players just select their choices, um, we run this protocol, and in the end uh, it points out which movie to watch. <coughs> so this is all, all nice and shiny, and we can just use it, but there might be a problem. Here we might just not trust our smartphones, so it might just uh, intercept already our choices by, um, at the moment we, we put them in. So, uh, but we have uh, cars and physical assumption for that. So, um, and yeah, so the second motivation for this topic, uh, like crypto without computers, is also that they might be used in detected context. So, I'm, I'm actually using them to, to teach it, to teach cryptographic uh, privacy notions to like junior high school students. Uh, so, they're kind of like they're 13 and 14, and they were able to understand the protocol. And, I'm talking about uh, right next, so don't feel pressured that uh, it will be, will be simple. Okay, actually it's by Mitsuki and Sona, it's already a couple of years old, um, from 2009. So we can compute an end, which is like private set intersection, we only like want to watch, find out whether we want to watch the same movie for one movie, um, with playing cards. And we can do so by putting, Alice putting like a hard card, for example here to the left side, if she says yes or no, uh, on the other side it puts the uh, club card on the remaining position. Same for Bob. Um, we have a, a club and a hearts encoding a zero uh, at the remaining position as helping cards. Of course these are face down because otherwise we would already learn the results of uh, the inputs of the both players. So this puts us into one of the following configurations. When both players say yes, uh, we have here hearts clubs, hearts clubs, and clubs hearts is zero bit here, uh, and so on for the other positions. So uh, one uh, short observation you can make is that under the side of Alice's heart, uh, there's always like the correct <coughs> result. Like if both players say yes, then the output should be hearts clubs encoding a one. And here uh, it's zero, here it's zero, and here it's also zero if one of the players of both say no. <coughs> So uh, we can observe that this invariant kind of is, uh, is preserved under exchanging both sides. So we can just um, put, uh, like split this into two, uh, put them in envelopes, exchange them quite fast so that we don't know whether they have been exchanged, and put them back. And now, only now we can like open Alice's cards because now they do not long, no longer encode her result because. Um, they have been inverted with probability one half by exchanging the two sides, but we still have that the result is under the side of the heart, so here or here. So this is a very simple protocol, and um, yeah, our main question is: Can we do with less than six cards? So we need at least four cards for already like encoding the inputs, but maybe we don't need the two helping cards here. <coughs> And so we already know the answer. Two years ago in AsiaCrypt, we, we knew that uh, there's a four card in the five card protocol. Um, but the remaining question is, can we still be very practical? So uh, these uh, protocols, I will show one of them uh, in a minute. 
are in a sense very unpractical. So <laughs> it's not usable in practice, uh, like in didactics context, or really in practice. And here we give uh, like a partially no answer. Um, so for uh, some meaning of practical, we can show that there's no uh, five card or four card protocol. So that this six card protocol we just saw is optimal. <coughs> and in the second part, uh, for arbitrary circuits, we additionally need a copy because our inputs are kind of physically uh, on the table. So if we want to input a bit into multiple gates, we need to copy them. And there's copy protocols for this. And there the open question is, or the question which uh, the paper uh, ad ad addresses, is how many cards are necessary there. So we want lower, card, lower bounds for both of these problems. So let me quickly uh, describe a short way to describe uh, card-based protocols in an enriched fashion so that uh, it uh, encodes not only the protocol description but also some more information. So a protocol state is just like a box where we <coughs> write down all possible sequences of the cards which might long, lie, lie on the table at this particular moment in time and we annotate them with symbolic input probabilities, like uh, for example in this sequence, hearts, clubs, hearts, clubs, both players put a 1. So this card sequence is lying on the table when, uh, with the probability of, symbolic probability of both players uh, saying 1. And if we do it like a shuffle, which introduces the randomness we need for the security, um, we can easily calculate the, the uh, state which comes after that. So in our exchange of the two sides, shuffle, uh, which is written like this, uh, there's a set of two permutations where we choose one uh, with probability on half and the other as well. Uh, we can just write, for example, all, all states which have been here before, again, because identity doesn't change anything. Uh, we have to multiply them with one half because this permutation will be done with probability one half. And the other permutation, we just have to look where each uh, sequence ends up after this permutation and add the one half of the original probability to the sequence. So after the shuffle, we end up in a state like that. And we have like shuffling and turning uh, in Kappa's protocols in the two base operations. Uh, so if we turn to the first two cards, uh, as we did in the protocol before, um, we just uh, branch the tree and write down all the sequences which are compatible with what we see in the, in the step. So here it's hearts clubs, and here it's clubs hearts. And for security, we have to ensure that, uh, that the observation does not depend on the inputs of the players. So uh, the probability of going right uh, has to be a constant. It, may, it, does not, it should not depend on these. So all these x1s, ones and so on, they sum to one, and after summing them to one, kind of, uh, we, we get a probability of one half of going here, and probability of one half of going here, and we will normalize uh, by multiplying with two uh, after we see this observation. So security is an easy check. At each turn operation, we have this local check um, uh, of looking whether the probability sum to a constant. And correctness is even easier, we just have to look at the leaf nodes um, and uh, see whether this, the output of cards uh, are compatible with the, with the uh, inputs of the player. So this enriched description, you, from this you can easily uh, see security or correctness of the protocol. Okay, this is a four-card protocol, which I was advertising as not being very practical. It's much larger than the six-card protocol, as you can see. But here, the main point uh, is that this shuffle operation, I'm not sure whether you can read it, but it, it has a general probability distribution on the permutations, so it does not use the uniform uh, probability. But the identity is done with probability one-third, and the other uh, permutation was two-thirds. So this is very hard to do in practice, actually. So I will talk about it in a minute on why this is hard to practice. Um, but the second point <coughs> is that, that you might run in circles. Um, so there's always a small probability of going another round. So this is only a Las Vegas type of result and not a finite runtime. So we don't have an uh, a priori bound on the, on the runtime. 
Okay, so we don't call this practical, and uh, now um, uh, we, we restrict ourselves to certain shuffle operations, which we can easily do in practice. And here I will quickly motivate uh, why so called uniform closed shuffles are nice. So uniform is we want the uniform probability on this permutation set we do in the shuffle. And closeness is that this permutation set is a subgroup. So that if we take two permutations and do them one after another, we end up in the, in the permutation set again. So and these are nice because there's like a very simple, passively secure implementation of that. Um, uh, so first, uh, the statement, we want a shuffle operation should perform a permutation from this permutation set. At random, and no player should know which permutation was done. So we can do this by first uh, Bob looking away and Alice just doing some random permutation from the set, and then Alice looking away and Bob doing this permutation. And in the end, uh, it's kind of a secret sharing on the permutation side. Uh, we, we end up with a uh, with a random permutation, and which is also in the set because of closeness, and it has uniform probability because both players input. A uh, uniform problem, uh, problem uh, uh, permutations. So these are nice, uh, but uh, not only in the passively secure, but there's uh, um, uh, ePrint paper uh, stating an actively secure implementation uh, using only uniform cuts uh, and, and helping cards. Um, and there you then to ensure that the other player kind of does not do any permutation not in the set. Okay, so that's uh, like a quick sketch of the proof idea of the flower bounds. So, um, so we want to show that there's no finite runtime closed shuffle five end protocol. So if you want finite runtime, so no loops, uh, and uh, if you want to assume that all shuffles are closed, which uh, shows that they're easy to do, uh, then the six card protocol we just saw is, is optimal. And we do that. By induction, uh, we classify a number of bad states. The start state is also like a bad state. And we show that we cannot kind of completely leave, uh, leave the set of bad states in, in this protocol tree. So that if there is, for example, a node where we kind of leave the set, go to like a final state, which might output the result, there's all, always like another vertex going uh, into the bad states again. So we kind of never leave it completely. So I can't really go into the proof, uh, uh, but kind of this is a classification of the five types of bad states we did, and we described the final states a bit more regularly, and with that uh, we were able to, and using a little bit of group theory, uh, we were able to to show impossibility. Okay. My name is Daiki Mihara, and next is for copy protocols. Uh, from my input commitment to X and some additional class, a card based copy protocol is to make n, commit n copy commitments. Uh, we sometimes write n commitments like this. And please note that at least two n cards in total are necessary for n commitments. Remember that these copy protocols are as important primitive in card based computations. And the state of the art copy protocols are as shown in this table. In the XONETs, you did 2n plus 2 cards. While in Shimura's, you did 2n plus 1 cards. Although this is the Nasmas algorithm. And in this presentation, we show the work bounds on the number of required cards for copy protocols. That is, we prove that there is no copy protocol with 2n cards. And in addition, uh, there is no copy protocol with there is no copy protocol with two n plus one cards in the in the case of finite runtime. So these music sonnets and instruments are optimal in terms of the number of required cards in the cases of finite and infinite respectively. Then we first are trying the impossibility group with two n cards. We assume for a contradiction to the existence of copy protocols with two n cards. Let's consider the <laughs> final state, which we call leaf state, like this. Uh, if input is there, there are n black to red colors, red pairs. And if it is one, there are red to 
and led to blood clearance. Uh, although uh, we omit the detail, a shampoo cannot be the last action because a shampoo usually increases the number of sequences in, in the state after the shampoo. So we now uh, assume the last action is hanging <coughs> over the cut. But in this case, both the sound cuts must be the same color, a contradiction. So we, we need 20 plus 1 cuts to have a copy protocol. Let me move on to the second impossibility result, that is the impossibility with 20 plus 1 cuts for finance runtime. time. Also, also we assume for a contradiction to the existence of finite copy protocol with n plus and n plus 1 length. So, because of finance runtime, there must be the GPS leaf like this box. And uh, I assume, uh, we assume uh, the last action is turning over the card, turning over the first card, and uh, let it repeat. That is, the first card, both the first card is red, and the rest are uh, output components. And so, by the way, when we turn the first card, there must be a possibility uh, that a block is also repeat, like this box. Both the first cards are blocks. But in this case, there are exactly n minus 1 blocks and n plus 1 length. So in this state, we can't construct n commitments. So, th so there must be that. There must be, there should be a deeper leaf, a contradiction. So we can conclude that 2n plus 2 cards are necessary for finite copy protocols. So <coughs> let us conclude our talk. We'll just a quick summary uh, of what uh, we did. Um, so uh, we saw before that 6 cards are needed for finite runtime and with closed shuffles. Finite uh, runtime is denoted by F and closed with C in the diagrams below. And there's another result which I didn't talk about is that five cards are needed for AND with uniform closed shuffles. So without the run finite runtime uh, requirement, but using uniform and closed shuffles. And we, saw, we just saw that 2n plus 1 cards are needed for copy in general, and for finite runtime, 2n plus 2 cards are necessary. <laughs> So uh, let us, uh, because it's kind of, uh, there's multiple possibilities of like finite runtime or non-finite runtime, uniformity or non-uniformity, and closeness or non-closeness. Uh, so we can put them in, in a nice little Hasse diagram where empty set has no restrictions. And we know that there's, for example, a four card protocol. Um, so this is optimal. And uh, yeah, for finite runtime, uh, there was a five card protocol, and we knew that that was the optimal by uh, by Asia Cup 2015. And so this is kind of how it looked before our new work, and this is how it looks after. So the color encodes like the tightness of these bounds. So green is like there's the tight bounds. So um, because copy was not really studied before, we get a lot of new tight bounds here, uh, and the image was looking much uh, worse before. And we get new bounds here. So there's still some uh, some colored, non-green colored things, which uh, might be already solved. Um, but there's a nice uh, other open problem. Uh, so the non uh, Maybe Maybe uh, we can achieve actually five cards in the setting, finite runtime and closed, um, but if the fifth card is not a heart or club, which is used for the encoding, but for example, a different symbol, like a spade symbol, like a third color. Uh, so for example, this is a nice open problem. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Do we have any questions? Yeah. Uh, if you're provided a Boolean circuit, uh, does your result tell you what the minimum required number of cards are? Uh, no, not directly, but from from this um, 
lower bounds in the building blocks, you can uh, you can compute it. Uh, I think yeah. So you have to you can't directly read it from our paper, but you would have to do some calculations. But I think these lower bounds uh, will will make it easy to calculate that. We, we actually didn't do it, but yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I answer oh. the question. Uh, yes. There are only uh, there are only less there are only maybe three lower bounds in Cardinal's computation. One is and and protocol and the other is X lower and copy. So we we can't uh, we can't uh, so in any Boolean circuit, uh, so we can't already construct or improve yeah, so, so. In, uh, or study analysis uh, of any lower one. Yeah. So I was assuming that you build the blocks together with, with a building blocks, but of course there might be some more efficient solution to do it uh, not using like this end and things uh, yeah, for so. Do we have any other questions? There is no so less than the speakers, and there is no other speakers as well.